Go, 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 Jack! Hi, man, drums are Welcome to the back of his teardown lab. Now, I have recently been given an Atari STE, and I say recent, probably a month or two ago now, a long time ago. And there's a number of mods I intend to do on it, and this is one of them. And unfortunately, I've got so little time, I wanted to do it properly, and I really just can't sit down and plan the time properly to do the Atari ST. So I, I'm kind of half refusing to make a video about it till we can do it properly. However, that being said, there are a few components that are sort of turning up, or I've already been given, such as this, and I've ordered another one of these. And this is a floppy disk drive emulator. And these are used out in industry, because there's a lot of machines, be it CNC machines, knitting machines, you know, just basically machines that make things that still run on floppies and those machines are big capital investments that cost like 50 grand 100 grand so they're not going to change those just because they're a few years out of date um, so what they're doing is they're buying these which emulate a sort of ms-dos pc floppy when you you have your pen drive and you put your disk images a bit like iso files on the pen drive and plug it in here and then you can select the image up and down and then the thing will you know, basically emulate inserting that floppy disk number, say three, in the machine and it will load up your program. So you can use these on your old school retro equipment, your Ataris and your you know, Apples, Amigas, you know, anything that uses a floppy basically. But the problem is it doesn't always work. And the reason it doesn't because there's so many different formats of floppy disk um, that they really they're not compatible with each other. So, for example, an Atari ST could kind of read MS DOS formats ish, but couldn't write them. So there's all sorts of different caveats. So these things are only designed to work with MS DOS images, but that's fine because some bright sparks have actually written new firmwares for them because they're a pretty standard apparently sort of reference design here. I mean if you think about it what you're trying to emulate is relatively easily emulatable using uh, you know you could probably use a Raspberry Pi even if you wanted to and replace this. But these are so cheap because these are I think they're about £12, £13. And there's not much in them really, look. <laughs> Two LEDs, but only one's popped through. I wonder what the red LED's for. We'll have to have a look at that. Um, so on the front, you've got this seven segment screen with three digits, and that's being driven from the board. And look, it looks like it's actually being driven through a sort of serial interface, because there's only four lines connected. So that's a bit very unusual. That's a really unusual thing. Um, looks like it's kind of modular, so perhaps they were sort of integrated just as sort of various ways, like screwed internally into things. So this this sort of disc caddy is obviously just something that someone's you know this manufacturer's made for you know just so you can flip it in a disc caddy. But you could just as easily pop this PCB out and mount it internally in your device if it's got an internal floppy. Um, drive thing and you didn't want to mess with the case. So let's have a look at the chip. So basically it's an ARM7 ST Microelectronics ST32F105. So it's really standard. That's a very standard chip. And that makes a lot of sense because, I say, people reprogram these using some of these headers on here. And this apparently is one such thing. And I'm not going to really get it out of the box because I don't think I need to. I kind of might try to home uh, homebrew it using one of my booby boards but you can see what this is this is basically a, a serial a USB to serial adapter and it does a 3v3 or a 5 volts output for that so that's kind of useful in itself you pick these up pretty cheap probably for a pound or two um, because you can reprogram the firmware using a serial protocol so there is a bootloader that somebody's written for this that lives on here to allow the sort of factory programming um, to be altered, and that's via serial. So it's just, just having a quick look here. I'm guessing it's some of these pins here. Um, I really, I kind of don't expect that this thing would just plop straight in. So I'm going to have to do some digging on that one. But just having a look here, we do have some jumpers here. We've got M0, S1, S0, JB, JC, JA, J5. So these are probably different sort of settings for this unit to emulate maybe different types of floppies. Maybe these are weight states. Imagine you have a have this into in an old piece of equipment and it's running at like, you know, what's it running? 8 megahertz there. It's probably running way faster than a old floppy drive ever would. So maybe the machine's going, whoa, whoa, I, think, you know, I can't understand that. Slow down, boy. So that's what these are for. 
Should we have a look underneath, see if there's anything there? Nothing really, so it's probably, uh, I can't tell how many layers it is, but it might even just be, yeah, I think it's just a two layer board. Nothing much to it really. Just a few through hole wires. Really nice, simple design. I do believe on my research on the internet that someone has kind of made either this one, ripped it off, or they've made a reference design for their own one. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you sort of see these things cropping up from time to time in sort of homebrew designs, but really don't mess with those. Just go out and buy this one, go from GoTech, because they've already done the hard work. Um, if you're using Atari ST, I believe you have to buy the firmware from a chap who's created the firmware. Again, there are projects to try to make an open source version of the firmware, so you can just sort of change all the parameters you want. I don't think that's got anywhere just yet though. So I'll have to wait for that. So there you have it though. You know, that is the GoTech floppy drive emulator. Make sure you get one if you've got an old uh, computer. So you might have um, a bunch of uh, images for your Atari ST, get them onto the pen drive and start, uh, you know, wanging them on here. Because I suspect you could just plug this into the second disk interface, for example, on the Atari ST. So you still have the original floppy and then you have this. And if I recall, just back in the recesses of a conversation, that the um, actual, um, there's some sort of quibble, some sort of issue with the hardware actually. So if you hook this up to the disk port by some sort of happy fluke of nature, the drive letters will swap around and this somehow becomes the primary drive, if I recall. So even though you've got your disk drive on your Atari ST, you don't have to mess with it. You can just use this sort of perched on the side. So there you have it. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like or subscribe. Leave comments down below for sure. I'll be uh, willing and expecting to chat to you. And as ever, thanks for watching.